today's video, we're going to go ahead and start creating that projectile, that fireball that our player is going to shoot when, well, when we hit the attack key. I'm just going to come over to the player because I want to have a scale or frame of reference for it. And I went ahead and downloaded some sprite sheets for fireballs. So we'll go ahead and work on one of them now. Once you've done one, you can do the rest. I'm going to do the red one first. So if we set up sprite sheets before, we know how to do this, right? We know it's a multiple. Everything else is the same. We want to go ahead and make sure that we switch the filter to point, hit apply. Then we'll go ahead and open up the sprite editor. And this is a pretty easy one. We got a nice grid here. So it's uh, three columns by two rows. So I'll go ahead and try that one first. So columns, three rows, two. Go ahead, hit and hit slice. And it looks like it did a pretty good job for me. So I'm going to go ahead and start with that. Hit apply. Our sprite sheet should be done now. I'll close this down. And if we open this up, Sure enough, we get all the different parts. Great, let's create the, the actual animation where it flies. I'm gonna select all of them and drag them into the scene. It's gonna ask me for an actual animation name and I'm just gonna call it Fireball Red. And I don't wanna save it in the actual folder here with all of these sprites. I wanna save it in our animations folder. And let me see, we have assets. Well, that's the asset store. We're going to go right back to assets. We're going to go into animations. Way down here. And I've already created an empty folder to put the fireball stuff in. I'm going to go ahead and save it there. And this is the folder here. So we have our mechanism or the controller. Plus, we also have the animation. Great. So let's go ahead and scale this down. And I'm also going to rename it. I'm going to call it Fireball Red. And the reason why I'm calling it Fireball Red and not Red Fireball is because I have three of them and I might end up with more than three later on. And when they're being sorted alphabetically, I can have all the fireballs together in the list here. And then just use the actual color to differentiate the types. So this is too big. Let's go ahead, we'll scale it down to maybe half of that size. So 0 0.5, 0 0.5. I think it's still a little too big. Let's try 0 0.4 by 0 0.4, and maybe a bit more. That's too small. Again, this is just season to taste. That looks pretty good. Actually, maybe 0.4 was good. It doesn't matter. Again, play around with it, season it to your taste. I'm gonna go ahead and save it off. I'm gonna come into my prefabs. I have a folder for my particle systems. And I'm actually going to rename this. I don't actually want to call it particle systems anymore. Do you have this lock? I do not. Uh, let's just go in and rename this. I want to call it projectiles now that I think of it. So that's what this is going to be. So I'll go ahead, open it up. Fireball red, drop it in. Now let's go ahead and write a script that's going to move it in one direction. And I want to take note that by default, it's facing to the left. So I'll come into my scripts. I'm going to go ahead and create a C sharp script called projectile. And we'll go ahead and open this up. Uh, this is actually going to open it up in Visual Studio Code, which is not actually what I want. I want to do it in Mono Develop as for new people following along. I think it's a little bit easier if we're all using the same tool when you're first getting started. There we go. So now I'll open it up again. And here we go. So by default, I just get rid of everything in there. And the first thing I want to do with it is assign some sort of speed so that I can control how fast these fireballs are going to move. And like always, I like to keep them private. We'll make them serialized fields. We're dealing with speed, so I'm going to make it a float. And I'm just going to call it speed. And I'll assign it a value of uh, 10 is probably way too fast. Let's do 5. And since I'm going to be moving this during update, so every frame, I still like to go ahead and cache my transform. It's a very slight increase in performance, but it's a simple one to do. But because I'm caching it, that means in my awake, I have to go ahead and assign it. And then the way I want this to work is when I go ahead and launch a projectile, 
I want to call a certain method. Now in that method, I am going to have to go ahead and pass in the direction. And then during the update, it'll go ahead and just keep heading in that direction. And there is another way I can do this since I'm putting it on my player. Instead of passing that direction in, I could go ahead and actually get it from the sprite render itself. But I'm not sure everything is going to go ahead and have um, the sprite renderer set up the same. Well, we'll see here in a second. So I think I'm actually going to stick with passing in an actual direction. But because I am passing that in, that means I'm going to need a reference to it. Uh, for now, I'm going to go ahead and create it as a serialized field just so we can watch it in the inspector. But I don't actually want it to be exposed in the inspector because there's nothing the, an editor or a level designer can actually do with it. So I'm just going to call it move left since by default, that is the direction it faces. And let's create that method that we're going to call. So it'll be a public void fire left, I'll call it. So I'm going to be firing the missile or projectile to the left. I'm going to pass in a bool dir for direction. And all I want to do in here is go ahead and set my, my bool value up here. So move left is equal to dir. Now, if you really just want to go ahead and make this public and allow them to access it that way, you can. I like to keep everything private though and control everything, all the input and output through variable or through methods. But now we need that update. So void update. And all I'm going to do is say t.translate. And the one I want is well, really just the first one, the vector three, what direction we're going to move to. And I'm going to use a vector two dot left. But then I'm going to multiply it by our speed. And of course, we also want to multiply it by time dot delta time so that we normalize over the, uh, the frame rate. So everything is frame rate independent. And let's go ahead and check this out inside of Unity. And let me check here. Uh, we're going to go have to add a little, another, little bit more code in there, but that's fine. This should be enough to actually start moving it. Uh, first, we've got to assign it as well. So we'll go ahead, take our fireball red. We got to put that projectile script on it. Uh, by default, it's set to move left. But again, we're not using that variable, but this should move it, right? Great. Way it goes. Now I want to be able to move it left and right depending on that toggle. So what I'm going to say is if move left else oh, we're going to move it right. And we can either just come in and use right or if we stick with the left we can also just do a negative. Either one will work in this case. So let's go ahead, we'll save that off. And now if I hit play, move left is toggled. And if I flip it the other way, it's gonna move this way. Now we gotta get it to turn around and face the right direction. And we can go ahead and play around with the, the flip here. So let's take a quick note here. When we have it move left, it's moving that way, right? Uh, when we want it to move this way, we know we can just hit that toggle, but we want it to flip. So what if we hit this? Oh, there we go, right? So all we got to do is access the sprite renderer and the flip on it, just like we did with our player. So that means I'm going to need a reference to it. So sprite renderer, which I always call SR. And of course, that means in a way, we'll have to go SR is equal to get component and component type is sprite renderer. I'll save that off and I'm trying to think if I ever need it to actually go ahead and change direction while it's flying. I'm not planning on it. So I could probably put that down here. If we're shooting to the left, it's fine. We don't have to play around with the flip, but we might want to check to see if dir is equal to false. So if we're not moving left, then we can say sr dot flip x is equal to true, which is going to flip it the other way. Now we actually have no way to show this off unless we're calling it from another method. So what I'll go ahead and do is just put it in start. So start's going to call this method when it starts up before it actually calls the first frame here. 
And I'm actually just going to go ahead and pass in the actual move left. This will allow me to change it in the inspector before we hit the play button, and it should change automatically for me. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and untick it, hit the play button, and there we go. It turned and it went the other way. We could do it an update, but again, I don't want to check that every single frame. There should be no reason to, as I'm not planning on changing the direction as it goes, only when it's first initiated. So there we go. And of course, if we have it tech checked to move left, we have that. Great. I'm going to go ahead and save this off as a prefab. And there we go, we have a projectile ready for us to fire. So in the next video, we'll go ahead and take a look at how we're gonna fire this projectile. I'll see you then, bye-bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest, or being stalked by eagles and falcons, lions, tigers, and bears.